kind of wish someone would have said to me at the start of my running journey that, oh, you know what, you'll have them runs where you're like, oh my God, where's the nearest toilet? What someone may eat in a day on Instagram does not do the mileage that I do. But then I look at that video and I'm like, oh, well, maybe I could try doing that where there's no fats and no this and no that. When you get to a marathon and you've forgotten your watch, that's got to throw you a little bit, right? Oh, my God, that was possibly one of the most stupid things I've ever done. I'm Izzy. I'm on Instagram as RunnerMankB. Um, I started running as a bit of a hobby to shift some weight, um, and I seem to have gotten better and better every year. Um, I work in learning and development, and, yeah, that's, that's it. I want to kind of take everybody back to kind of the start of your story because there's a lot that I want to talk about um why was running something that first entered your life why did it first kind of when did you and why did you first lace up that pair of trainers so I was kind of in and out of running since I was 16 um, and I actually first started it because I did a race for life um and also to kind of shift some weight when I was younger um, I was kind of stubby and um, so in my head as a 16 year old I was like oh if I run I'll lose weight um, and yeah I did a race for life trained on a cross trainer which wasn't wise um, and then I just kind of abandoned it as I went to university um, and I tried to get back into it I did a 10k without any training and yeah it didn't go very well um, <laughs> and then at the start of lockdown, or just before lockdown started, um, I suffered an ectopic pregnancy. Um, and I was like, oh, I really, really want to do something for the charity that helps me. And I was like, I'll just do a half marathon, um, like you do. So I ended up lacing up some very old trainers that were not running trainers at all. And um, they were actually Adidas Oswego's. Please never run in them. Um, <laughs> and then I just kind of carried on and carried on and carried on. And it's just not stopped from there. From that person, lacing up those trainers, doing the charity run, to the person that I've got in front of me today, somebody that has ended up on podiums at run through races, Warrington Running Festival coming second. Would this Izzy believe that that, or would that Izzy, I guess, believe that this Izzy was kind of where she was now? No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> Simple um, answer, no. <laughs> absolutely not. I think I started as a hobby and it's still a hobby, don't get me wrong. Um, but there's something about doing well in it that makes you kind of want to keep going and keep going. Um, and I, I keep saying to myself, like, when will it stop? Like, when will you just kind of go, okay, I'm done. Um, but she definitely wouldn't have even thought that she'd have got below 28 minutes, 5K, and then she did. And then it just kept chipping away and chipping away. Um, and then 5K became 10K. And, um, yeah, now it, it's going to 60, 70 mile a week. So, yeah, it's a bit crazy. That's an important message though, isn't it? For people listening to this, like that are thinking about that initial goal. Maybe that is breaking half an hour for the 5K or breaking an hour for the 10K. Like once you do do that, because if you put the work in, you will do that. You're just going to keep on thinking of new goals, aren't you? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, my first 5K was like 36 minutes in lockdown. Um, and I was really angry at myself as well um, because... I was just like, I used to run 30 minute 5Ks or under 30 minute 5Ks and I was really, really angry. And actually the first run I did, I only managed 0.72 kilometers. Um, obviously I was in Oswego, so that definitely didn't help. Um, and I was really, really mad at myself. And instead of going home and being like, that's it, I'm not doing it because I'm not good at it anymore. I was like, no, I know I've got it in me and I'm going to keep going because if I don't, I'll probably hate myself for it in the future. And 
thank God I went home and had a talking to myself because it kind of changed who I am now. I know you're a massive proponent of not just running, but like just physical exercise in general. You're, you know, running big mileage weeks. You're also going to the gym. You're also doing hit classes. How do you go about balancing all of that? Because it's a lot of physical activity to get in and having a job at the same time. Yeah, it is really tough. And a lot of the time it's 5am wake ups and it's going to bed at like half nine because I've ate late. Um, And I won't lie, it's been a struggle in a sense of my eating because I'm so on the go all the time. My eating did suffer. um, And it then means that you suffer. um, And it wasn't something that I was very familiar with because I've always been such a big lover of food. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I forgot to eat today. Um, yeah. So it was really difficult to find that balance. And I think a lot of people who up their mileage and then try and do strength training. Um, and then in the summer I have tennis. In the winter I'm preparing for skiing. So it is a lot. And the balance, I think you just have to keep reminding yourself. Um, it works for me that I said to my family and friends, look, you really need to say to me, have you ever eat? They'll make food. Um, so I say to my boyfriend that at night, if I say to him, oh, don't worry, like, I don't I don't need anything big, that he says, no, yes, you do. You've done a lot of exercise. Um, so it's finding the balance through getting help from family and friends as well. I think someone said to me once, and it's the thing that always sticks with me, particularly when you're starting to do more mileage if you're in a marathon block or whatever, like, Think of it like diesel in a car. And if you're not putting enough diesel in a car or petrol in a car, like that car don't work. And that's just something that I keep on top of in my head as well because I'm the same, like out of a marathon block or out of a training block, you don't really think, you don't really need to think about it that much. Even, you know, if you're just kind of sustaining mileage. But as soon as you build that mileage, it's a bit like, ah, okay, I need to like focus on this a little bit more. It is the best way to view it and I think we forget to view ourselves like that because we're just like oh yeah a bit of food here or there we don't think about the nutrients we don't think about um I mean everyone says oh you need to have less calories going in and um burn more if you want to lose weight and if you want to gain muscle you do this and you do that and you hit your macros and it's a lot like you just kind of sat there thinking what is in this and and am I following the right plan and then you've got Instagram where you get videos of people saying this is what I eat in a day um and I'm not saying that they shouldn't create them videos because it helps a lot of people but them kind of videos are what then makes people compare themselves and what someone may eat in a day on Instagram does not do the mileage that I do but then I look at that video and I'm like, oh, well, maybe I could try doing that where there's no facts and no this and no that. Um, so, yeah, it, it's definitely the toughest part is fueling. I think it's a bit unrealistic as well sometimes when you see those videos because, you know, I'm not saying they're all untrue, but if some are, that isn't an healthy thing at all for, for people that are watching it. And it's something you do brilliantly um, on Instagram, I think, is you're very candid you're very real there's no there's no polishing of anything it's just like this is me this is who I am this is what I do this is what happened on my run and I think that's why your account is just continuing to grow because of that authenticity is that something you think about or is it just something you kind of do it's just something I do um I am a really honest person and sometimes I'm (laughs) too honest. Um, But it is something that kind of wish someone would have said to me at the start of my running journey that, oh, you know what, you'll have them runs where you're like, oh my God, where's the nearest toilet? Is this bush okay to just stop in? Um, And I didn't realise that. And as my running journey has has progressed, I suppose, you always gain experience so like race days I now have certain plans on my race days and I'm like right okay I'll do this I'll do that and they kind of become as well like superstition 
kind of do a, a pizza a day before, I will be like, nope, my race is out the window. I'm not going to do well in it. <laughs> and I, I, I do. And I have this thing where I have to make a pizza as well. Um, I say, well, it's before a marathon that I have to do that, I say to myself. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a lot that I'm very open and honest about, um, often during my runs and um, needing the toilet. <laughs> and even kind of being like, you know what, that was a really bad run. Um, I know in this, well, it's not this marathon training block anymore, but for Valencia, I went out to do a run and it just started throwing it down. I was in shorts. I had no coat um, and I hated every second. Honestly, from the minute I left the house to the minute I got back, which was, by the way, an hour long run, I hated every single second. And I got back and I, I did a recording and I was like, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. And I'm not going to turn around to myself and be like, oh, it's fine. Tomorrow's a new day. Because in that moment, I was like, I'm done. I'm completely done. Um, so, yeah, being real is definitely something I wish I'd have seen. It's like, yeah, when you have those days, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not running again. That's me. I'm going to take up golf or something. Like, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. And then, and then, And then sort of 10 minutes later, like when you've had a drink and you're, I don't know. I, I've got this place every run I get back on I just end up sitting on the stairs I just sit on the stairs and upload my stuff to Strava when I get home and then like no matter how hard or brutal the session's been once I get up from the stairs and I've, I've had like a glass of water I'm like okay let's carry on with the day and I'll go again tomorrow and you're like that's the thing isn't it you're like oh, I'll be back out there tomorrow after two minutes later you've thought nah I'm just gonna bin all my medals and just forget about this burn the carbon shoes <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I think that is definitely something that goes through all of our minds and I think yeah. it's really important to remind yourself of the really good runs that you've had because they're not all going to be amazing um and I think I really struggled with that when I hit a certain point of not getting PBs every time I went for a run I was like well what's what's going on why am I not suddenly getting more and more PBs because when I first started and in lockdown, a lot of people were, were running and they were doing 5Ks and everyone was like, oh, I'm chipping away at that time. And then suddenly you, you don't anymore. Um, so yeah. it, was, it was difficult to get that transition from going out to run a PB and going out to run or marathon training was the biggest lesson for that because you're not going to PB in your marathon training um every single time and you shouldn't be what's what's that like then when you know you're faced with a marathon training program for the first time and you see all this stuff on there that makes very little sense to people that know what they're doing and and makes even less sense to somebody that's coming to a marathon program for the first time your tempos your steadies your easies your intervals your what was that like was it a bit overwhelming or or did you kind of take it all in your stride um, I have to Google a lot <laughs> because yeah, yeah. in my first marathon, <laughs> in my first marathon, <laughs> I didn't train, um, which was really silly of me. The most I did was like 15 kilometers. So it was oh, wow. so stupid. I know, I know. Um, and then the second one, I was like, right, I'm actually going to train this time. Um, and I followed a plan on Runner's World. So we there was no runner app or Cooper running app or any of them apps that we now have. So I saw like Batlet and interval training and this and that and I'm thinking, what is all of this? I thought you would just have to run a certain amount of miles. Um and I try and stick to some sessions. But now for me it's it's less about doing these threshold runs and this run and that run. I just go out and I run. And I see how I feel, or I'll go to the gym and maybe do an interval run on the treadmill, but I don't stick to that script. This has to be a threshold run, this has to be fat, this has to be easy. Um, I prefer my easy runs, so if that's what makes you enjoy your training, then I suppose just go with the flow. 
We've, we kind of spoke about some of your traditions already, the, the pizza before the marathon, the having to make it yourself. Um, when you get to a marathon and you've forgotten your watch, that's got to throw you a little bit, right? Oh, my God, that was possibly one of the most stupid things I've ever done in my whole entire life. Um, I got to Manchester Airport and I went through security. I was obviously very excited. I was going to Valencia um, and I got through security. And do you know when everything's been checked? And first of all, they were really picky about what I was taking through. I didn't have hold luggage, so I kind of had to really limit myself on what I took. Um, And as I'm kind of getting all my stuff back, put my bracelet back on, put my whoop back on. And then I was like, where's my watch? And I thought, I've not put it in the tray. I know where it is. It's gone sad. Um, And I was already through security and I couldn't go running back. And I was just like, what do I do? Like, I had no idea what to do because for most runners, that is the thing they go off. Um, and I was just like, can can I rearrange my flight? Can I get one in the airport? Will I get one at the expo? Will there be any in Valencia? And I just, yeah, I kind of I didn't lose my head. But I was like, you're an idiot. Like, I was really annoyed at myself. Um, and then I went to the expo and they had a Cora, like tent kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I went over thinking, I'm just going to get one. Like I'll get the one that's it's around £200 and it'll just help me with my splits in the marathon. And as I got to the tent, they were like, oh, we sold out. But we've got this one for like €500. Euros. <sighs> I was like, I've got a working watch at home. I'll just run it. I'll just run it with without a watch. Um, and I didn't even want to run with a phone. So I kind of went like, if I'm not running with a watch, I'm going to have to run with a phone. So I bought a belt from the expo, one of them running belts. Never ran with one in my yeah. life. Um, and just went with it on the day and put it like towards the back so I don't know whether you're supposed to wear them at the front or the back or whatever um but I put it to the back so that I wouldn't be tempted to look at what splits I'm doing throughout the marathon and I just ran and um, turned out to be one of the best runs I've ever done it was steady um because usually in a marathon I set off too fast and I end up then slowing down and stopping towards the end and I didn't do that in this one. I just kind of went with it. I kind of thought, oh, I think 30 minutes have been now. I'll have another gel. And it was pretty wild. I think that's a testament to to like how in tune with your body you must be. Because, you know, that's a scary situation to be in on the start line of a major marathon. Out there as well, working alongside, you know, a big partner. You're out there doing... <laughs> the one of the most famous races on earth and you're you're there trained up and you've decided right i'm going to run this without anything did you set off with a pacer or anything or was it literally purely to feel purely to feel i can't really remember but i think i saw one and like all my family had said to me just stick with the pacer then then you know where you're going to be and i was like no because what if i can go faster at the start like what if i'm not the person I was at London, where I did a 314 marathon. What if I'm quicker than that? What if I'm slower than that? So I was like, oh, whatever, I'm just going to go with it. Um, and the start of Valencia Marathon is mayhem. Like, I couldn't find my stride at first. And I think that actually helped because it made me pace myself at the start. I was running on, like, the pavement. So I was having to go around the runners Um and one guy clipped the back of his foot with the front of mine. And oh, wow. we're having an argument in two completely different languages <laughs> whilst running. And I was just like, this is this is awful. Like, why did I agree to this? Um, but then eventually, as you probably know, in a race, you, you end up breaking off from a lot of people. Um, 
and I had no clue where I was until I saw like a time map and I didn't know whether it was one mile or whether it was three because I know some I don't know I thought I knew that some races you did have that one mile um, and then all of a sudden I think I finally clocked a sign and it said 7k because a broad races apparently do it in kilometers and I was like 7k has flown by I was expecting to see a beat that I was supposed to go past turns out completely yeah. missed whatever beat might have been there um I just I think I was so in my own zone that I saw 7k and I was like okay right just keep going keep plodding um and then I was like don't pay attention to these pavements don't look at their markers until you feel like you need that that drive um and then eventually I needed that drive and it was like the markers saying 30k and I thought oh my god I'm so close um, so I think running without a watch definitely helped, but can't say it's something I would intentionally do again. Well, I was going to say that, would you do it again? But I think you've just already answered that. Um, for people that don't know, what did you end up running? I ran it in 254.08, I think. Which is yeah. wild to say, like, especially after, like you just said, running around 314 in London like did you did you did you feel like you were on for something like that or was that a pure shock it was a pure shock um I obviously I couldn't see any time and I was going off so in Spain um they have like the clocks on the side of a lot of chemists Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I've done that. And before. I was, <laughs> and I was like, set off at eight forty-five or something close to that, and it's now this time. Then I was like trying to do maths in my head, and it was distracting me then from how dead my legs felt. Yeah, so in a pain. way, that kind of helped. Yeah, the pain. But I was like, oh, I'll be at three hours ten. So clearly, I can't do maths. Um, and <laughs> as I got towards the end, I had a think. A mile to go and Valencia it's everyone is in your face towards the end it felt like it was just like a corridor that you could go down like a single person um, because there's so many people getting closer and closer trying to peer around and see who's there and who's coming next and eventually like the amount of space you've got to run in it just gets thinner and thinner and usually with about three two even one mile to go, I quite like to stop. <laughs> I tell myself, like, oh, you can stop for, like, a second or so. Um, and in this one, I was like, keep going, keep going. Um, and one of the lads who I went with who worked for Pro Direct, he was actually there, and I saw him, and he was like, oh, go, go, go. And I thought he said to me that I'm in the two-hour mark, but I, I couldn't fully grasp what he was saying because at that point I was, like, just, keep going um, and then I got on to like the famous blue the blue floor whatever you call it um, and then they had like the bib times at the top um, on the finishing bit. and it was the orange bib and then there was the lilac bib which was mine and it said two hours 53 at that point or oh, two hours yeah two hours 53 and I was just like I'm surely not. Um, and you see my face on the pictures, and the pictures are horrendous because I'm just like, I, I, could, I could not believe it. I was just like, no, that's wrong. It's got to be wrong. Um, so, yeah, I had absolutely no idea. But I just knew that I felt good. I felt a lot better than London um, because in London, I stopped halfway for the toilet and then stopped again. And once you stop, it it's yeah. really difficult to get the legs going again what were the moments after like when you realized that they weren't playing a joke on you and that actually was your time <laughs> um what what were those kind of like initial feelings and moments i i would imagine disbelief and shock but be proud of yourself i'm proud <laughs> yeah so i just literally burst into tears grabbed my phone to double check on Strava that it, it was actually accurate. Um, and then I rang my sister 
and I FaceTimed her and I was just crying. And my sister was in oh, D&M. And <laughs> she was like, can you stop crying? <laughs> I was like, I can't. And she was like, oh my God, that is amazing. And she was in shock. And then after ringing her, I rang my boyfriend because there's quite a way to, to get your medals. And, and people were seeing me crying. They were like high-fiving me, congratulating me. But it was just, I was in my own bubble and it was just the best bubble ever. What what have you allowed yourself to think is possible since that race? Because I think I think everybody probably has a breakthrough race and maybe you thought you had had it, but I think obviously Valencia is now going to be that forever. Like that is going to be your breakthrough race. Like, do you do you foresee, you know, a lot quicker in the future? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I want to say yes. <laughs> Um, but I yeah. know how much dedication I had throughout the months before Valencia. Um, obviously, I didn't know I was running Valencia until about two months before, but my mileage was already high. Um, and it, it did <laughs> it did take a lot of miles to kind of get that result. We, I love running, so who cares about the miles? Um, but I think there has to be a point where I go, Okay, maybe that's it. Okay, maybe that's it. Um, but after Valencia, a lot of people said to me like, "Oh, do you have a coach?" And I said, "Well, no, I just run myself." Um, and they said, "Well, if you had a coach, do you not think you could be even quicker, even better?" And it has run through my mind, but I feel like that has taken the fun away from it for me. Um, but I've got London in April, and um. I think I qualify, well, I do qualify for the championship section um, and I'd really like to do that and possibly get below 254, but Valencia is very, very flat and London, I know from experience, is flatter than a lot of marathons, but it's not as flat as Valencia, so I think we just have to see. I love that you've got that like real passion for running and like you ooze it you obviously love it you love the physical exercise as well but you're never gonna let that go I can see that like that is that's the number one thing for you isn't it like if you if you weren't enjoying it you wouldn't do it yeah definitely um I think when the enjoyment comes out of it that is the saddest thing and that's what I always say to people who say oh I'm about to start training for my first ever marathon. Can you give me some advice or my first ever half marathon? And the biggest advice I can give people is don't suck the fun out of it because if you're not enjoying a run, you're not going to want to go for the next one. Don't get me wrong. We all have them runs where we're like, that was not enjoyable at all. But if that becomes a thing, like run upon run, week upon week, you're never going to do it ever again. Um, I was surprised that I did another marathon after my first one. Um, but I have to kind of say to myself, well, you didn't train for it. You wore brand new trainers the day off that you've never worn before. Um, you're an absolute idiot. So just see how you go <laughs> in the next one. And yeah, from there on, I just kind of absolutely loved it. 